This week on the Computer Chronicles, computers and politics. We'll show you the latest campaign software and web tools for running a political campaign. We'll meet a man who's using the internet to run a campaign for Congressman Tom Campbell. He's trying to unseat U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein. We'll take a look at the website for the top presidential candidates and show you what works and what doesn't. And we'll give you a peek into the future of 21st century democracy voting online. Plus, my pick of the week, an amazing mapping program that's a must-have tool if you're in business. It's all coming up next on The Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by rondiamond.com, the oldies site on the Internet. Music and memories from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, not just another jukebox. Additional support comes from the law offices of Ivan Hoffman, lawyering with integrity for Internet law, copyright, trademark, and other intellectual property law. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. The Internet has had a major effect on how we live our day-to-day -day lives. Research, communicating, advertising, shopping have all changed. Perhaps the most important change, though, resulting from this tech revolution is in the political realm. PCs and the web have forever changed the way politicians run their campaigns. If you're a political campaign manager these days, you'd better be web savvy. One of the things you'd better know about is something called Aristotle Publishing. It's the leading company selling high-tech solutions to political campaigns. Here to give us some insight as to how the candidates are using the web and campaign software is Michael Farmer of Aristotle Publishing. Hi, Mike. Hello. All right. One of the things you guys are doing are selling web ad banners, interactive banners to candidates. They're advertising just like everybody else is. You have some really cool examples. Uh, for instance, one for George Bush. Uh, show us how that works. Absolutely. This is very exciting. What, what the political candidates are able to do is take the issues out to the people and put a banner in front of them and bring to, uh, in, in an interactive right. sense. So this banner might be floating on any website. It's an ad banner. Absolutely. But I can do something with it. Let me show you this Bush banner. It, it is actually a tax calculator. It's interactive media. You go through it, you click on a couple of buttons, and you determine how much money under the Bush plan you'll save. So the idea is I see that how much I'll save, I'll say, hey, that Bush idea is pretty good. He's going to get me so much money. I vote for him. Absolutely. It'll also engage you into his website. Now, all of a sudden, you can volunteer. Okay. You can contribute. Got it. So. All right. Now, you have one for McCain also, right? Absolutely. Uh, now, this was kind of, kind of an important one. Yeah. Well, actually, we have Steve Forbes up here right now. What was this one? Steve Forbes actually utilized this uh, banner. It's, it's very interactive. And what you can actually do is put the issues right onto the banner to, to show the people where you stand on the separate issues. Furthermore, he even put a video on this. And this went out as a banner, of course. Right. And people pull this up, and they can learn more about the candidate, become engaged, and then all of a sudden contribute. All right. And so. mainly, you don't have to pay for those 30-second TV spots. These spots are sitting on your website, and people can watch them anytime they want. Absolutely. Let me just pull this up. If you're going to watch this uh, little video, it'll come All right. Up so here. this is like, I mean, a 30-second or 60-second TV commercial. Here's where Forbes stands on the issues or whatever. Absolutely. And let's see if we can get this guy working here. Here we go. Now, I mean, Forbes isn't in the race anymore, obviously, but the website's actually still up, right? Absolutely. Yes. He, it, we're, we're showcasing what Forbes actually developed as far as a, a banner ad campaign. Yeah. We work with him. Targeting, the, the results that you can get from this are click-throughs as high as 7%. Which is pretty dark. Yeah, let's take a look at the spot for a second. Later in the spot, you'll actually see he'll... Uh, bring on some people and they'll talk about the candidate. It's and why a TV commercial. Hey, Forbes is a great guy, blah, blah, blah. But, All right, uh, let's move on, and because we've got a lot to show. Can you get that McCain site up? Because that was an interesting ad banner, too. Um, I don't believe, let me just pull that up here. What I can do is go in. And... All right, so these are like demos you have on your website, actually, yeah. for all these different candidates. And what I'm actually pulling up here is I see McCain over there. The McCain, he used this in Virginia to get on the ballot. And watch these So again, banners. it was an interactive ad banner. Yep. And you can click right on the banner and say, I want McCain on the ballot in Virginia. Look at this. Third one down. All right, do you want him on the ballot? And it actually worked. Yep. 
Absolutely, it worked very well. Okay. The response rates up to, to click throughs up to 7% on some of these banners. All right, so you're selling guys ad banners. I think you told me you've got like thousands of people waiting in line for these ad banners. Right. Uh, another thing you have is voter lists online, which really makes it easy to go find who should I be contacting, who should I be talking to, who should I be sending direct mail to. Absolutely. One of the things we've actually done with the voter lists online is you can take it to the extent of mapping. Here's what we did in particular in New Hampshire. Uh, there are uh, 142 million registered voters. Aristotle has access throughout that the country. Yes, uh -huh. absolutely, throughout the whole U.S. Um, 142 million people. We take that. We build this database, and in in New Hampshire, for example, we actually can, we created a map where you can go on and take a look at what the uh, okay. So the is. high points on the map in this particular version is like where most of the people are. Absolutely. So if you're trying to figure out how to allocate your resources, where to place your ads, where to send the guy to a town meeting go to the high points Absolutely. on the map. Very interesting thing took place in the uh, Michigan uh, primary. Uh, Angler told uh, Bush where he should exactly go, and it may have been his good boy no network, nobody <laughs> knows. But Not as good as the hard data. Absolutely. Can you show us, you also have a contribution engine which you put on Alan Key's website for him. Do we have the Key's website up yeah, there? Yeah, absolutely. This is probably the biggest thing that's going on in the internet right raising now. Raising money that. on the web. Raising money. And the neat thing about raising money on the web is that it's quick. And the other thing is uh, there, there's something called a fat cat. And people normally go and, and right. will, will solicit from a fat cat. There's a new term out because of the internet called yeah. the skinny cat. Because <laughs> the people that actually contribute online contribute. Lots of people with a little bit of money. Lots of people with yeah. a little bit of money. Yeah. All right, last thing I want you to show me, great tool you have called Web Wizard. It's not just about the presidential race. What would you say? There's a quarter million people running for office right now? Absolutely. In any given election cycle, a quarter million people will run. Uh, and I... And so if I'm running for dog catcher with Web Wizard, I now have my instant candidate's website. Absolutely. Not only uh, is it a website that just shows your image, your issues, but this particular website will set up a contributor. Uh, uh -huh. set so I can get donations. Do the, you even have a survey. Could you scroll down the road? I can say, hey, what do you think about this particular issue? Absolutely. I can do my own little private polling. Right here. You're That's engaging great. the candidate. Mike, thanks so much. Thank you. Well, we've seen a little bit of what's out there in terms of high-tech tools for political campaigns, but how are the candidates actually using this stuff, and do they think it's effective? Here to take us into the political trenches is Joshua Ross, the Internet strategist for the Tom Campbell for Senate campaign. Hi, Josh. Hello. And Tom Campbell running for Senate here in California against Dianne Feinstein, who's the incumbent. You guys have a website up there. Is it kind of a fad to have a website, or is it really an effective campaign tool for you? Oh, it's not a fad at all. I think that it's a very effective campaign tool, and I think that this year is giving us a glimpse into what campaigning is going to look like in the future. But you mentioned some people actually in the past put up websites just because the press would write about it. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that in the, in the past, uh, campaign websites primarily were set up to try and generate press attention, maybe uh -huh. get a few users to come see them. I think that this year you're actually starting to see campaign websites go up online that are trying to accomplish something substantive. Yeah. All right, now your candidate is from Silicon Valley. I mean, that's the district, so if anybody does it right, you guys should do it right, I guess. You have Tom's uh, website up here, and just sort of take us, uh, give us a tour and show us the kinds of things you're trying to do on the website. Okay. Um, what we've put up here is uh, some biographical information about Tom Campbell. That includes his background, a little bit about his experience, um, and just generally some of his publications and photos. What's well, a photo gallery? What is this? Just pictures of just, him on the campaign trail? Exactly, so just on? pictures of him on the campaign trail. So is this sort of trail. just warm, fuzzy stuff to get people to know who he is? That's right. We're, uh, his, his name ID is not very high at this point right. in the campaign. And as it progresses, it will be increasing. But we're trying to give people an understanding of who Tom Campbell Got is it. and what he stands for. All right, so what else do you do? So we have the About Tom issues. One of the most important areas of the site is the issues portion of the site. Tom Campbell is trying to run a campaign that has a theme of substantive content, a positive message, and direct communication with the voters. The website allows us to do all these things. And in the area of substantive information, the issues area of the website specifically. So if I'm, I'm a voter and I'm trying to decide whether to vote for Tom or whether to vote for the opponent, I can say, well, what is his position on education? Or That's whatever. right. If you're interested in education, for example, you can come to the education mm -hmm. portion. Uh, we have video on the site of him talking about the education Okay, so a little issue. clip of him talking about That's it. That's right. And you can read an introduction. You can read a little bit about what his record is on that specific issue. And if you want to, you can drill down into more in-depth content, okay. for example, on how to attract and retain good teachers in California. All right, now, so what's news? Is that just sort of latest uh, press stuff about him? Exactly. News are just some of the latest gotcha. press clips. Well, let's go to Town Hall. That's kind of interesting. Explain that one. Absolutely. The Town Hall meeting is something that he set up uh, a few years ago in an effort to have direct communication with his constituents in the 15th. So this is sort of a district. virtual Town Hall meeting? Very much so. The Internet allows uh, Tom Campbell to have direct communication with the voters 
uh, one to one, no interference, no campaign staff in the middle. So I can go on there and sort of post a question, Tom, what would you do about this situation? Right, exactly. So for example, if we go underneath the, uh, the budget area, you'll see a number of questions that have been posted by constituents uh, and right, just well, generally... What's your view on California. paying off the debt? Exactly. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so each night he logs on his laptop and is able... And answers to, these questions. Answers them personally. And what this is great because it allows a few things. One is that it is done on the, the user's time and on the candidate's right. time. They don't have to be in the same place at the same so, time. So it's kind of better than a real town hall meeting in a way. Yes, absolutely. You just don't get to press the flesh and do that. That's bit. right. Well, you have to have the direct one-on-one -on -one communication with the voter by answering their questions, but at the same time, by using the Internet, you're able to post the material online and let all the voters of California yeah. log on and see the types of discussions you've had with people. All right, now everybody thinks the, the website is cool because you can raise money on the website, right? How That's do you guys right. do that? That's right. Well, we have a very simple donation form that allows you to donate via credit card, and that is extremely effective both because it allows people that aren't necessarily on campaign donation list, people that aren't being asked for donations to be able to... I might not have gotten direct mail from you or been called and I can go on here and say, oh, I like this That's guy, right. I'll give money. And also if you expressed interest in making a donation to the campaign opposed to going through the traditional method right. of getting your name, having gotcha. a volunteer gotcha. contact you... So it's less expensive around. to acquire the donation. Absolutely. And I take it you get the money faster. Right, absolutely. The turnaround time is uh, dramatically shorter as we saw in the recent presidential election with uh, John McCain. Now. Uh, this sounds very high-minded, you know, I mean, issues, it's all good and clean. There's like no nasty stuff in there. There's no, you know, down-in-the-trenches strategy. Is that just the approach of this particular candidate? That's the approach of this particular candidate. He's trying to run a very, very positive campaign, and I think that the Internet definitely supports that. Yeah. However, you're going to find other campaign sites that go extremely negative. Right. What about the use of email? Is that a great tool for you guys? Yeah, it, it is a great tool. It allows us to, with you, the typical way that we used to do it is you want to have an event, you'd have a number of volunteers come in, mm -hmm. set up a phone tree, have them call hundreds of people and trying to get the turnout. Nowadays that time has been reduced to one volunteer in about five minutes writing out an email, sending it out yeah. to the people that are in the right geography and uh, hopefully getting a good response. And you had a good example, right? There was the recent Republican convention here in Burlingame, California, and you were able to use that to, to get people to come, right? Absolutely. We have a fairly large email distribution list of people that have specifically signed up and said that they would like to receive email from yeah. the candidate, people that are supporters. And what it allowed us to do is say, send uh, out an email to everybody that's in the Bay Area that we think might be interested in coming to this convention. And the turnaround time was five minutes. Josh, time. last point real quick. You've got an uphill battle, very popular incumbent there. Is the web an equalizer? Is it easier for a guy with less money to compete? I don't know if you'd call it an equalizer, but it certainly gives him a distinct advantage that candidates that were in the same situation in previous elections didn't right. have. He's not going to be limited to only 30-second spots to try and communicate who he is and what he stands for. He can, allow, he can give out his URL. People can come there, and they can get a much more in-depth understanding of who he is. Josh, thanks a lot. You're welcome. All right, coming up next, to look at the websites of the would-be presidential candidates and the future of Internet voting. Don't go away. We'll be right back. By now, we all know that websites for political candidates have become a critical ingredient to anyone hoping to get elected. And the Super Bowl of campaign websites, of course, is the battle for the presidency. Here to help us figure out who's doing it right and who's doing it wrong is Lindsay Arendt, a writer for Wired News who's written extensively on the online efforts of the presidential candidates. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. All right, we have a bunch of them here. Let's start with John McCain. That's the classic story of raising a lot of money on the web. Anyhow, do you think that's a good website? Yeah, John McCain's done a great job. It's a scrappy website. It's very it's streamlined. What does scrappy not, mean? Scrappy means they put it up, they have young people running it, and it's not. it doesn't have too many bells and whistles. It's not crowded or cluttered but it gets the job done. Okay. Um, he's got things like instantly when you get on, you have a cookie come up asking you to give them money. He's got okay. an extensive... So they know what the web is about, these guys. Definitely, definitely. And they have a, an extensive group of people who are volunteers who are running the websites who are doing a great job in the individual right. state. Now they use email pretty cleverly here too, right? Once they very get you? Very much, very much. They're hitting you get every day? Every single day, at least once or right. twice a day. And he did a cool fundraising thing, right? If you wanted to chat live with John McCain, you paid so much for it? Right. It's actually a pay-per-view kind of thing with a candidate <laughs> that I've never seen before, where you actually, you pay a hundred bucks or more, you get to chat live, like right. you were saying. 
with John McCain, and I, I don't know how much money he got out of it, but it was a great idea. Pretty clever. Now, let's go to Steve Forbes. He's out of it, obviously, but he did a pretty darn good website, didn't he? Yeah, he has all the bells and whistles. He has his commercials at the bottom. He's got all these little things, these icons everywhere, these e-precincts, which are supposed to be this big what deal. What is e-precincts? It's where everybody in different geographic locations are sort of separated via the web, and they get together in their areas All right, via so email. gather your little support groups in each of the communities. You need them when he's about to show up in town or whatever. Exactly, exactly. But to me, the website, even though it has all of this fancy stuff, doesn't really do it for me. I mean, it's very crowded. There's a lot to look at. You don't really want to go through that, and there's no direct message at you right yeah, away. Yeah, kind of too corporate in a way. I mean, not, not the scrappiness you were talking about in yeah, between there. Yeah, exactly. did, did, Didn't do much good, obviously. Well, obviously Spend not. Spent a fortune. Yeah. All right, let's try another example. Gary Bauer, here's another failed uh, candidate, and yeah. you think his website was pretty lousy, actually. Yeah, I kind of do. I think it's pretty cheap looking, and they obviously didn't put a lot of effort into their web effort as in part of the campaign. You look at this good news thing, here it is with late February, and this is left A little bit out of date, six, seven weeks. Yeah, it's back from the... Well, I maybe I they haven't had good news in a long time. <laughs> exactly, and actually talking to the people in the campaign, they don't really know what's going to happen with the website. They haven't made any plans to take it down, to update it. They just yeah. kind of think, oh, we'll just leave it the way it is, which shows they don't care that All much right, about let's it. Let's go to George W. Bush next. Uh, okay. Ton of money, supposedly sophisticated campaign, but a lot of problems with his website, right? Yeah, yeah. This is a website that looks pretty good. They did have to overhaul it once or twice. It was originally run by all volunteers, and George W. Bush did not show that he was very net savvy when he tried to uh, shut down this website, this parody site, gwbush.com. He tried to go to the FEC, the so federal... So these guys put up GW Bush to make fun of him. Exactly. And like he didn't like know the web culture, let it be. Right, he tried to make a big stink about it, and basically that's an yeah. assault on people's privacy. Everybody was up in arms about it, and he showed that he, he didn't did know a, much. He did another kind of dumb thing on his website, too, instead of you know posting the, the contributors list in PDF formats and nobody could really see it. Exactly. That was also a big gap. I mean, he's shown that he really isn't an Internet-savvy kind of candidate. I mean, I think he's yeah. alienated a lot of young people that way. All right, let's go to the Dems for a minute and uh, take a look at Bradley and Gore. And what do you think of the Bradley site? I like Bradley's Pretty site nice, from yeah. the beginning. I mean, from the very beginning, he was always up there with a good web presence. He always had photos. Every event that he went to, they would put photos up. They had this biography. It's just very clean. A little map there so you can check on where you're from and see what's going on. Yeah, does it matter, you think, other than the fact that we like it? I mean, is there, enough, is there a consequence to a good website, a bad site? I don't know. I think the good, clean websites that aren't too cluttered, that have a direct message, usually do pretty well. I mean, Bradley yeah. has raised quite a bit of money online. Right. He's done pretty well, and so has John McCain. So maybe there's a correlation. Yeah. Maybe. What about Al Gore's site? Al Gore's also a pretty good site. Uh, let's see what it looks like here. They also have, you know, they have some bells and whistles. They have a, a cursor that morphs into a comment when you sort of download it. Uh -huh. They have a kids section. You know, What's the point in the kids section? Getting them young. Try to get them into the party when they're young. <laughs> All you right. Like, so, like, yeah. like selling Hershey bars. I, I find that it's slightly boring. You know, I don't know. It's not so different than Yeah, it doesn't ones. look real exciting visually, that's for sure. Just watching the commercials. You know. Okay. Pretty simple. Now, what's interesting, and we talked about this a bit before earlier in the show, is... Anybody can put up, I'm running for president website, right? Right. And you've got a lot of real wacko websites up there, and I think right. you have one good example, Fig Bar Man for president. What exactly. is this about? It's just some random person who wants to make a <laughs> statement, put a website up. It's easy enough. That's what the net's all about. Right. I mean, you have Admiral Akbar, which is a cartoon alien for president. <laughs> you have random people running for president all over the Internet. It doesn't mean anything, but it's for fun. Just jokes. Yeah. So on the web, anybody can run for president. Anything guess, goes. Huh? You can never yeah. Thanks a lot, Lindsay. Sure. Well, the final step in integrating the Internet into the political process would be online voting. While that prospect scares some people, it is probably going to happen. One of the leaders in the movement for Internet voting is Warren Slocum, the chief elections officer for San Mateo County in California, right here in the middle of the Silicon Valley. Hi, Warren. Hi. All right, first of all, there, there, there are a couple of, before we get to the voting, there's some pretty good websites you like as a guy who has to sort of administer elections, and one of them is this Shape the Future, which solves a big problem you guys have, right? Of course, one of the most common questions on election day is where do I go vote? Right. Um, with this or, or who do I call to find or, out where or, to vote? Or, yeah, that's right. exactly right. With this website, you can put in an address, a zip code, and your birth date, and click the button Submit, and... The site then returns. It checks the if you're registered. First of all, checks to see if you're uh, registered okay. to vote. And I'm glad also, you're registered. That's good. Also, um, it and tells you where your polling place is. And in this case, I'm voting at the school, uh, the Roosevelt School here on Vera. And if uh -huh. I need to know directions, I can click on the link and it'll bring up um, the directions. Is this only in San Mateo County or is this over the country? Um, this particular application is in San Mateo County. Throughout America, there are various... Uh, 
um, styles and types right. and approaches. That's to a great all service. Yeah. All right, now speaking of service, just figuring out what you want to do, how to figure out the complicated vote. Certainly here in California, where we have all these propositions sure. and the issues are so complex. There's another site, I guess, uh, the League of Women Voters have up. The League of Women Voters has a, a great site called Smart, Smart Voter. Voter. Yeah. Um, the tagline is State of the Art Citizenship. And this site allows you to put in your street address, your zip code, and it'll actually return to you your real. Uh, ballot that is the things that you so you get a real sample ballot online and sort of practice your voting exactly and uh, there's enhanced voter information for all the candidates and the measures and the propositions uh -huh. so from a voter perspective it really is an enhanced voter education and again site. is this a regional thing or a national thing this is in several counties in California okay. some counties in Ohio and the league is looking to spread that um, application yeah. across the All right, now let's talk about the voting online there are actually companies in business now trying to develop engines for doing this and one of them, which actually has a sort of demo online, is VoteHere.net. Explain what this is. Well, VoteHere.net is an internet voting company. It's one of three or four companies, and they actually have a site, VoteHere.net. It allows us to go in and actually sort of see what internet voting might be like. What it would like. look like to vote on the net? Exactly. Um, it comes up and it tells us we're about to cast our ballot. It takes us uh, just a moment here to download the ballot. Mm -hmm. And in essence, this is what a real internet so ballot might look like. What it would look, look like, like to vote on the web. Um, yeah. And you would just, on this particular ballot, vote, get to vote yes and no. This company um, actually did a binding party vote in Alaska hmm. um, in January. And then there are other uh, companies that are, are doing Arizona. For yeah, instance. there's a couple others. Can you show us? I think there's what, uh, votation.com, which did the Arizona uh, sort of trial ballot. Is that up here somewhere? Here is uh, Votation.com, right. and they're doing the Arizona vote on March 11th, a party vote. Uh, there's another uh, company called, uh, uh, let's see here. There's one called, I think, InternetVoting.com. The there Internet it is. Voting, same idea. Uh, .com, same idea. So there are three or four major, um, right at this moment, yeah. Internet voting companies. Now, sort of a halfway step, and if I can ask you to grab that little Votronic box over there, and let's show our viewers what this is. This is actually... Well, you explain. What, what is this thing we're looking at here? Well, this is a portable voting device. Um, it can be multilingual. So it we're can, not online. We're not online. It's a standalone electronic device, weighs seven, pound, seven pounds, highly uh, mobile. It can be multilingual. It can have multiple ballot styles. There are no paper ballots connected with this. And in essence, um, it brings up an electronic ballot. And there you see um, on this sample that we're going to uh, cast a vote here simply mm -hmm. by... Uh, Mark, putishing, putting the stylus next to the candidate of our choice, we actually proceed through the ballot making our choices um, by touching the spot. And then so no paper, no, no real papers to count or scan or whatever? No. Well, so what, what, what are the advantages of using something like this, Warren? One of the main advantages that I see is simply the, the strategy that it takes the voting to the people rather than the people having So instead of having to go to a polling place, you could sit exactly. this in a shopping center, a place exactly. of employment, take exactly. it to a, a home for, for elderly people or a something? A community center, wherever. Yeah. So um, to vote then on this, we just touch the button vote, and it comes up with a nice message, thank you for voting. And, and again, it. this could be multiple languages. It's easy to change the ballot, last minute, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. What about, finally, Warren, the real online voting stuff like we've seen here? There have been a couple demonstration projects. Obviously, people worry about security. They worry about privacy. What do you think about that? Um, I think those are legitimate concerns as a person who conducts hey, elections hey, for a living. We're trading stocks online. Uh -huh. Of course we are, but, it, but an election <laughs> is at the core of democracy. Right. It's vitally important. And in a two-vote election, an election administrator and the public need to be absolutely certain about the integrity of that process. Will we get there? We will get there. Um, someday you'll have a device that you'll carry around, and you'll be doing direct democracy. And a vote on your Palm Pilot, exactly. your Palm 7. I, I'm sure that will happen. How far away? Uh, not this presidential cycle. Maybe the next presidential well. cycle we'll see some of that. Warren, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. All right, that's our look at computers and politics. Don't go away. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week an amazing mapping program for would-be entrepreneurs. We've seen how politicians use sophisticated software to identify likely supporters and voters. Well, businesses can do the same thing in the search for new customers. And there is a terrific new piece of software out there to do that. It is this called XMAP Business from DeLorme. You've probably heard of DeLorme. They specialize in software that helps you get directions to where you're going.
But now they've taken that same technology, combined it with a massive national database, and created XMAP. In fact, their database includes over 100 million residential and business listings in the United States. This is powerful software that does so much it's really impossible for me to demonstrate it here in a minute or two, but let me try to give you an idea. Let's say you're opening up a retail business and you want to check out the competitive environment. With XMAP, you enter the location where you plan to put your store. You then ask the software, show me all other locations within a, say, two-mile radius where people are offering the same service or product. XMAP will then search its database, list all your potential competitors, complete with name, address, etc. It will then actually locate all your competitors on a map, identify them for you, let you mark your location, draw a circle representing the area you're concerned with. You can then adjust the parameters, redraw the map, etc. You can also identify and locate almost any kind of business by keyword, zip code, area code, address, etc. You can pull up statistics on the demographics of a particular area. You can even import customer data from Excel or Access, turn that into a geographical map. You can plan the most efficient truck route for multiple stops on a delivery schedule. You can even hook up a GPS receiver, drive around the neighborhood while XMAP analyzes the area. This is an amazingly powerful mapping tool, and it sells for only $99. That's it for this week's edition of Computer Chronicles. Thanks so much for joining us. If you need any more information about anything you saw on today's show, please check out our website. We'll see you here next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by rondiamond.com, the oldies site on the internet. Music and memories from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, not just another jukebox. Additional support comes from the Law Offices of Ivan Hoffman, Lawyering with Integrity for Internet Law, Copyright, Trademark, and Other Intellectual Property Law. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic.